Hello, people. How are you doing? Welcome to CJ Scott Special. And I am your host, CJ Temo. It's always a delight and a pleasure to have you tuned in. And, you know, as usual, I would say that you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Follow on every social media platform. It's CJ Temo everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube as well, Facebook too. Um, we bring you conversations that you want to listen to. We talk to the kind of people that you would want to hear. Uh, and we go all the way, we go out of our way to just get those stories coming to you. And remember, you can always comment, ask questions, and just engage with us even right now. Today, I am so privileged uh, to have a friend of mine, because we came all the way into Laikipia County and we are at the Nanyuki Sports Club, and I'm so privileged to have a friend of mine. She is the women's rep for Laikipia County. She is not anybody that I would even take the honors of doing the introduction for, because she is somebody that we, I want to say we all know. It's an assumption, but I will make that assumption that we all know her. The Honorable Kate Waruguru, how are you doing? Pleasure meeting you, <laughs> CJ uh, Termo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Thank you for making time. Thank you and welcome to the great county of Laikipia. Right. Thank you for having us over here. Karibu sana. You know, you, you don't even look like somebody who has um, nursed for the last eight months. Oh my God. <laughs> my story is the story of grace. Amazing grace is my story. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the one of the things that you know people have been talking about of late is uh, leadership as with regard to where we are going in the next two to three years young people and i have a lot of conversations with people young people uh, feeling that they need to get hope um, for the next season especially elective but generally i feel like every season we say we need young people to be in leadership at the end of it, they seem to be disillusioned. Um, is there a problem with us as young people in leadership? Well, thank you so much, uh, CJ. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. Like you said, my name is Kate Warugoro. Yeah. I'm privileged to be the people's servant in Laikipia, and I'm representing a woman. And generally, I'm not just voted by women, but everybody. But I'm there courtesy of affirmative action seat. All right. Um, I just turned 34 years old last month, so you were talking to the right person and picking <laughs> up a conversation on youth right. and uh, what we as youth are doing right and what probably we need to do to align ourselves better, right. you know, for posterity and even for future aspirations in the leadership of this country. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, we, we keep on saying that vijana ni viongozi wa kesho, but as it is, our time is now. Right. And uh, that only means that if youth are to lead today, probably somebody must feel insecure because they're going to be displaced. Okay. And somebody would feel like, I think these young people, they literally do not probably practice what they listen. There's right. a very big difference between you respecting people who are of a generation ahead of you, okay. our parents, our mentors and you trying to fight and squeeze some space for yourself right. so that you manifest and come out and showcase what you're made of and what, how you think probably uh, we should deal with issues of youth. You know, this country, interesting, is that 60, 65% of our voters and the people who are active and the drivers of the economy are the young people. Young people, right. But these young people, they tend to be represented by people who pre assumably assume they do not feel the way we feel as young people. Right. And when young people feel like we are not a part of the decision-making table, they have a way of communicating their message. Okay. They will either rebel, they will be resent, at times they will play even throw a manner of trash and that. Okay. The kind of frustration uh, uh, you get to see on Twitter, Facebook and the social yeah, space yeah. is a result of young people who have been frustrated and the only way they can express themselves is through the social space. All right. And I think the conversation you're trying to break it down is how else are we going to command our space without necessarily uh, going to the last option. And the last option is us pouring our anger on social media. And, and anyway, I'm a social media user, and I believe in some way it has big influence, but right. I still believe there are still other avenues we would use just to try to fight for our space and do things right as they should. 
But uh, we have been, uh, especially from the 2013, mm -hmm. um, people elected leaders mm -hmm. uh, based on generation. Mm -hmm. There was this uh, hope mm -hmm. that we were bringing in young people into leadership. And so there was such an expectation about how the country would totally change based on the fact that it was now a, a time for young people. Digital. Yes. <laughs> um, but they're very angry right now. Uh, Honourable, they're very oh, angry yeah, right now. Yeah, true, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, the 2010 co constitution, yeah. you know, was brought about by the former president and the former prime minister, Raila right Odinga, right. and uh, the president, the former president, Mwai Kibaki. Right. You know, the beauty about generations is that what you're fighting for is the next generation that is likely to enjoy. Right. You prepare the way like Moses did, yes. but then there will be the Joshua generation which will enjoy the space and the space and the democracy probably you fought for. Right. So the digital team and the digital pair made of Uhuru and William Bruto, right. they came in and campaigned on a platform of the digitals versus the analog. True. And you see now digitally people are like, this is a concept and it is built on a platform that makes youths feel, yes, we are part of the You're game. Of this, right. And probably the reason why majority of our young people would feel disappointed is because probably the 10 years since the promulgation of the new constitution, uh, probably our youth still feel this government needs to do better. And as a government, because I'm a part of the government, we right. need to do better than we have done. Right. But the narrative keeps changing because at that time it was digital mm -hmm. versus analog. <laughs> now we are talking about dynasties. Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> now we are talking about dynasties versus, versus hustlers. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> are we ever serious as leaders? It's the most interesting thing with us politicians, <laughs> starting with Kate here. Everybody want to brand themselves right. in a way that they can appeal to the public. Right. You know, Kenyans, they've already forgotten that the same person who was saying she's in the digital now and the analog yeah. are the same monkeys who <laughs> ship from one, one forest to another. And now they are there. We are the dynasties. And the other ones who say we are the hustlers and right. we feel and understand you. I think generally... You know, human beings and companies will continue investing more resources trying to brand themselves okay. and make themselves appeal with generations as they come. Right. But you see, what doesn't change probably is the mentality, is okay. the attitude, right. and is us keeping our words and our promises like you have said. For example, the president really, his first time he really tried as much as he could to see that he gives you a platform to engage into technical training and, right. and essentially prepare them for the market. And that's how the NYS came about. Right. You know what happened, but I'm happy <laughs> when well, somehow is back. We have Kazim yeah. Tani now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Mara. Oh, people have been paid. I've not been paid. Yeah. I don't know. What. I, I just think ideally, and how I feel for young people, and me being one of them, is that um, somehow we are not given. We are not the drivers of youth agenda. Okay. There are people in other generations, Sorry. and the big boys up there who want to drive the narrative and the agenda for the youth. Right. So we look like we are now the, we, we are now the people now to come and just make it shine, just be there, feel nice, look nice, say young, young people are being helped. I can't wait to see us get a whole cabinet secretary, a young person who will lead the docket for youth. All and right. youth do not necessarily need to be mixed up with other, with, other, with other dockets. Like, for example, we have the cabinet secretary on matters to do with gender right. and social welfare. Right. Why do we honestly, I mean, we can't get one of our own. I mean, just a young person driving and pushing even for the budget and looking for solutions and policies that articulate, you know, in a very comprehensive way, the issues that our young people are facing. But I will say that is always, you know, somebody paid the price for me to be where I am. Right. You know, if it is the old constitution, I would have waited for me to attain the age of 35 for right, me to qualify right, to right, become a member right, of parliament. Right, right, the, right. And that is how now my generation has made it in the National Assembly, right. in the Senate, and even we have a governor, we the young governor, the governor of Onande, right. Governor Sang. So right. somebody fought for the space so that from the age of 18, if you want to be an MCA, you want to be a mayor, you, you can just go for it. So the biggest question I would ask myself, what am I doing currently to see that the younger generation and our, my brothers and sisters who are coming after me, they will not necessarily need to face at the terrain that I'm facing and I'll make life easier for them. But I'll, I'll stick on that generation, I think, a little bit. Mm. Uh, because the former president, Mikey Baki, mm. wasn't young by all means. Mm. Um, 
but there was a feeling mm. like he actually started the economy and the young people were mm. uh, enjoying the benefits mm -hmm. of the same. Mm -hmm. Does it always have to be a young person who is driving the agenda for the young people or does it just have to be somebody who understands where the young people are? You see, um, you see, um, th this is, a, I'll take my Kibaki as a statemanship okay. and, and I'll get down to the 2010 constitution as a crafter of right. the nation and a crafter of the big dream from the 2030 vision, right. you know, to exactly the, presiden the, pure, the presidential system that, and system of governance that we have currently in the country. Okay. I, I, under I, I keep saying that um, it makes no difference, you being young and old, being a woman or a female, right. Right. What really matters is that you understand and you feel for young people and understand their issues. I want to bring in a very important point because okay. these are things I face every day when I walk into people's offices. All right. You know, they look at you typically like, Sasa huya anajua nini? Wewe juzi ulikuwa shule, hata sijui nini? You know, people just look at you like, you look like more of a, if not a civic leader, you look like more of an activist. Right. It's like you're always fighting and fighting and you don't want to engage on the table. Right. One thing that will make young people abandon their activism, fighting for their safe space, is them being entrusted and being given an opportunity okay. to take the lead. All right. And you cannot engage a youth by delegating them two centimeters of responsibility, whereas you have kept all the powers, resources, money, and you've kept it to yourself. All right. Are this feeling of, oh, they will micromanage themselves? I can I remember one day vividly the president said, Yeah, Vijana on our patia kazi too wanakua wezi. You know, it broke my heart because there are many thieves in this country. Right. Some of them, you know, they are briefcase thieves, you know, the best men in suit thieves, yeah. the yeah. old yeah. thieves, good looking yeah. girls thieves, you yeah. know, and, and typically they are not branded, you know, right. they don't they are not profiled as young people uh, that we look like we are thieves. I believe young people are competent. Right. We've got what it takes. We have taken our time to study. To study right. In a way, we are able to pull the past to the present by trying to read, understand, be mentored, and come to a place where we say, I've come to a place where I understand. By the way, we spend a lot of time in the quiet place and in the sacred place preparing <laughs> ourselves. But then, when it comes out here, <laughs> it is the young people mm -hmm. who take the battles of the older generation. True, yeah. You it is the young point. people. Mm -hmm. We don't really hear, mm -hmm. uh, until they are pushed out in a certain way, we don't really hear the young people coming up and saying, you know, we are really fighting for our space. Oh, yeah. We always fall back into the cracks of, are you on this side? Are you in Tanga Tanga, Keleweke, oh, whatever yeah, it is, sure. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Why are we not using mm -hmm. our numbers? Mm -hmm. Why are we not using the influence that we would have? Mm -hmm the social media, why are we not gathering together as younger people and pushing an agenda? Uh, why do we have to fall into, if I don't like your, the person I think you support, so I'm gonna fight Kate because I'm thinking you're on the other side. By the way, whatever you are saying is what the whole of this world and this country and the entire world needs to hear, right. especially patriarchal societies in Africa. Right. Yes, it's true, we take up people's battles, older generation battles, we inherit their curses, we inherit their enemies. And you know, in some way, we limit ourselves and we stop thinking and trying to look for real issues that can address the problems that our fathers could not. Yeah. And I think what we need is a quickening and an awakening call, like you put it across. Right. So that we start now understanding, yes, the world believes in us, it is we who are the problem. It right. is we who do not believe in ourselves and fight for our space and manifest to the world that yes, we carry the cure of the past ailing issues that uh, you're dealing with. Just to mention something about the political affiliations currently in the country because I know in every place, ikuwe ni veve base, ikuwe ni kwa club, ikuwe ni kwa church, ikuwe ni kwa mosque. Yani this country is this political. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to down there some bedrooms. People just meet and they are watching news and they differ on point. <laughs> Who do you support? Who is your friend, you know? We've yeah. even stopped being fans of soccer now yeah. and other, uh, you know, games. We, we're right. busy now politicking to a point even our children, they are able to understand. Right. I think it's not right. And uh, it's just that the society and the way our constitution is designed is designed in a way that political parties 
belong to people and people who own these big political parties which will give you a higher chance to be voted in somehow you have got to pull some you know some financial <laughs> muscle and for one reason political parties i tend to think is one way that in one way would dim our candles and dim our ability to just unite and bond and come together and fight for our space i think because i don't like really lamenting and complaining too much okay there is the provision in the constitution that i would allow you to become an independent candidate you can buy we have an independent governor in like right. and uh, independent members of parliament senators the senator for Kirinyaga is independent. Right. But then again, you just look at their numbers and arithmetics and how they're able to push their agenda. It's somehow, they're limited. So we are in a society that is made up of political parties, political parties which are aligned on the basis of ethnicity, right. and that brings up the, 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 the problem. I think that's why, personally, I said, you know, I'm a Christian, I love God, and we preach the same Bible. I don't want to be based in a call and a call that and a burden God has placed on the shoulders of the president right. and the former prime minister to heal this country and address the issue and the root cause of ethnicity in the country. Right. I cannot be left aside complaining okay. and murmuring. You know what? This country, it needs Samaria type of generation. Okay. People who find a man who is dead, asleep, dead sickling on the road, left to die. By, their, by his own brothers and sisters. Right. And the Samaria generation will come and pick up that man and take that man to the hospital. Oh, right. So that we move away from, I belong, I'm a Hebrew, I belong, I'm an Israel, I belong, I'm a Christian, I belong, I'm a Kikuyu, right. I belong, I'm a Luyo, and this is us. Right. To a point where we we'll say, it's not about us, it's about serving humanity and serving God. All right. You know, uh, the South African system is a bit different in mm -hmm. the sense that people vote parties oh, yeah. and not individuals. Yeah. Do you think that that would change um, the dynamics for us <laughs> if we went the direction of voting the party so that people can actually say, okay, we're voting this party because these are the policies that, uh, that this party upholds. Of course, there'll always be this element of ethnicity and something. It's working on. for South Africa, <laughs> but it has not limited South Africa from suffering problems with the xenophobia. Right. Uh, you right. know, and the racism is still there in a way. Yes, it's just that yes. it's not really announced, like it's, it's not, you know, it's not published right, in a way right. that people would really pick it up as a big problem. But the problem is there. Right. I would agree. You know, once the president sent Lafayette to who happens to be a cabinet secretary and is the SG in Jubilee Party, right. to go and benchmark in South Africa, you know, on the establishment of major political parties. Right. And, and interesting is that the president then at a Jubilee Party, his vision and dream was to make Jubilee Party a party which will transit from one generation to the other. All right. Unfortunately, in this country, it, we have a very bad element that really <laughs> makes people... You cannot work for five years without differing. Yeah. That is why you see we're in Jubilee House today. William Bruto cannot see eye with the president. The president cannot see eye with the deputy president. And then the, there is Tinga now, Tinga and William. They have their issues. And From in forever. one way or the other, <laughs> they affect the formations of these political parties. True, true. And even 2022, there will be a new movement. You wait. I think moving forward, what, yeah. what, 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 I mean, what do we see? And what is the word of hope to our people? that we need to allow ourselves to think beyond our political parties. Okay. Uh, we need to probably, even in the amendment which is coming, or the constitutional reforms that are coming, uh, we need to just take away the space of political parties. So we don't have briefcase political parties which are formed today, tomorrow, and you know, and you give a chance for political parties for them to be in a position to field a presidential candidate, there must be political parties which has been in place since inception for probably a period of five years. Okay. So that we don't have briefcase parties and people just fighting and then they gather in a certain cocoon to try to bring up a president. I think the presidency is, see, the presidency is too serious of a business right. that it should not be determined the last minute. Public participation should be allowed before people exercise their democratic right to go and vote in the at the ballot box. Okay. Right. They should be given an opportunity to just get time to know these parties, to know their leaders. You check them on political parties. Today, David Morade, who is the vice chair of Jubilee, is on interim uh, capacity. Yes. He speaks the way he speaks and addresses the nation the way he does, <laughs> as an acting <laughs> political party vice chair. So you see what I tell you, the level of mistrust in those parties, people will never be confirmed. He says, you wake up, you are interim, where sukuma hii, sukuma hii muendo tufike, alafu tutaku confirm, tukiendanga uko mpele. 
So I just think it's as more things we really need to change. But I will tell you, politics, they affect the economy, yes, they socially, do. politically, you know, uh, this is life. Right. And I really feel for the public and our voters because at times we play bad politics, like the COVID money, you know, billions, you hear hearing billions of money has been, you know, misappropriated. True. You true, know, true. somebody, unanunua mask kwa barabara, yeah. 50 shillings, yes. So, I have a scam with Jinga in Guinea, I supply mask and 2,000 shillings. You know? So, you, you see, and now these conversations, they, they are built up to the big boys, the big girls. They'll right. continue getting, growing bigger and fatter, and their bank accounts continue being bring palm, and the poor man will continue being poor. Why? Because of the way we relate the constitution and the politics of the day. And you know, even as you talk about that, um, we're about to wind up, but as you talk about that, do we empower these people to do that? Because eventually, if somebody has the money, they just need to come back and give a handout, and then we will feel like this person is connected to us, and mm -hmm. we will vote the politicians mm -hmm. who will give the handouts, not necessarily because they'll change our lives. So again, we go back into the cycle of, but this man or this woman has to get money from somewhere to be giving their handouts. So, <laughs> Aren't we the reason why we are in the state that we are in, even though we cry about it? I don't blame the public. Okay. <laughs> so how do we come and give you power? How do I come meet my women and they're telling mama, shamba yetu imeibiwa, and then I tell them, kwahirini mungu wa I don't even buy them lunch or their fare back home. It right. will be unfair. So I think you just take it back to the issue of uh, give and take society. Where right. I scratch my back, I scratch yours. To some way, I don't take it as a bribe. It's facilitation. Okay. Okay. It's inhuman if I walk to your house and you don't even serve me a glass of water or a cup of tea. Right. So it's the same with these people who come. You know, we are Africans. It's a kind gesture. Okay. Just tell them, I mean, thank you for coming. God bless you. But right. besides that, uh, does it mean if you do not have money, people will not vote for you? The people of La Equipe voted for me. I was a poor girl. I was just a nominated MCA, a woman with a big dream. And I went to the public, told them, look, I'm the youngest of all these women, but something within me just tells me I've got what it takes. So I believe right. it's the way you package yourself okay. and then the grace, because we say mine is a story of <laughs> amazing <laughs> grace. Oh, great. So what are we expecting from you uh, in the next two years? What yeah. are you going for? My card <laughs> is hid somewhere. So let's catch up next season. I'm going to give you a show and All I'll right. tell you exactly what I want. But I'm going to be here in Laikipia. I'm going nowhere. Let nobody limit me. I am above the studio typing, people telling you, you can't be a governor, you can't be what. Let them watch this space. If the heaven says go for it, I'm coming to your villages. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, what a show. So exciting and so refreshing to just have this conversation with Honorable Kate Waruguru, the women's rep for Laikipia County. And, you know, I just took this away. I, I, I took this as my take home. She said she didn't have money in the last election, uh, but she went out and said, look, I'm energetic, I have vision, I have purpose, and the people voted her. So for all of you young people, I've said this before, but for all of you young people who feel that you must be in participation and you must carve your space and your niche in places where policy is made, do not be afraid. Go ahead, voice ahead, voice out, so that we don't become a generation that keeps on shouting from the social media streets and we do nothing out there. This has been In The Chamber, CJ Atemo right here. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow on every social media platform. Until the next time, God bless you.